What's up, people? In this video, we're going to watch a Wes Watson video, the legendary Wes Watson, hardcore dude. I really like his videos. I feel like all of these XCON YouTubers are like a breath of fresh air after doing all these like anorexic skeleton girls and fucking what I eat in a day. Like, even the fitness stuff. Like, I've never seen him, you know, not really talk about fitness, but it all seems to be like just really interesting shit about prison. Uh, so, the shoe, I don't know what the shoe is, um, but we will find out right now what the shoe is. The shoe is the most militant place on planet fucking Earth. Every day, you're gonna wake up to 3.30 in the morning. Permiso a tira. It's gonna be the Southsiders doing the first roll call. They're calling out to their people by name, cell by cell, saying good morning. Now, on my biggest shoe term, the 14 month one, I had a fucking, uh, I would always hear the, the main Southsider Casper, I would hear the shot caller for the back, I would hear him calling out to his people, and he had the savagest voice. He would just say, Diaz, like good morning to everybody. And his voice was so deep and so crazy, it was just demonic. And this is at 3.30 in the morning every morning, in your cold ass, dark ass fucking cell in the shoe. Now this shit was just a life changing experience because I didn't see who Casper, what he looked like for eight months. Then when I finally saw him, I was shocked. He was fucking white. But then I thought about it and Casper fit. You know, the homies make their names fit the way they look. They're always good at that shit. But after the homie roll call is when the white boys do their roll call. We call out to our people. We say good morning. We give the, we give the notification that we're up and we're programming because you have to be up programming even if that cell fucking door ain't opening. Next, you'll go take your showers around 334 at some places, depending on what tier you're on. You're either going early shower or later shower. At this time, I was on the bottom tier and they would switch off morning, night, whatever. So then, then you'd have your breakfast. You start getting ready for yard. Every fucking time you go out to yard in the shoe, you're bringing something you shouldn't be bringing. Okay, so I just had a, a crazy thought. Like, uh, again, like, dude is super hardcore. Like, whatever. Clearly, you know, has spent a lot of time in a place that made him much harder than your average person. And I think that's where a lot of the, uh, you know, let's call it wisdom, come from comes from. Which is, you know, if you believe that suffering builds character how like having your freedom taken from you in prison I'm not saying it's all bad i'm sure there are some benefits blah 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 but like that's a it's a very painful thing to have to live with on a daily basis um that said when i was watching this you know i don't i guess the shoe is like i, I don't know what the shoe is, is that solitary or something or like I, I don't really know solitary housing unit maybe i'm not really sure whatever anyway uh, what I was thinking is that, you know, this is such a unique experience, right? However, I think that, you know, to me, as I watch this, this, this seems, it has some sort of appeal to it, right? I would never want to go to prison, ever, really, definitely not for like years of my life spend there. However, you know, if you are a man with aspirations of improving yourself, it's, it's pretty hard to look at a guy like Wes Watson and not feel some sort of desire to be more like him, right? The dude is jacked, first of all. He's very dominant. He's very like, you know, alpha male, whatever you want to call it. And you could make the argument that prison was a major contributing factor to that. So again, this, this presents us with a problem. Like, I don't want to have to go to prison and be like Wes Watson. Like, what, what can I do to be more like him without that? So the idea that just popped into my head as I was watching this first little two minute segment was that what if you had a private facility that these like rich like Silicon Valley people would pay for where they would go have like the prison experience for like a month you know they have to pay like ridiculous amounts of money because you have to you know all these you have to basically put actual not prisoners but like hardcore people in there I guess you can't really simulate it maybe like prison simulator game or something virtual reality prison simulator or something like that maybe in the future anyway okay maybe it's not the best idea you're hooping something I tell my, my celly, hey, gangster that shit. We call it gangstering that shit when you hoop that shit. So he's always bringing something out, always got a guy, always strapped, always got something, always got heat on him. And he's always playing sleight of hand with the cops when they're stripping us out. Because you're coming out your cell and you're in a shoe, you always have to cuff up through the tray slot. So you, you walk backwards up to the shit, you, first you strip out, you show them your butthole, you show them everything, they make sure you ain't got shit on you, and then they cuff you up, your hands through the tray slot. Now this is when the sleight of hand comes into play, you pick up something you shouldn't have after you stripped out, and then your celly is now about to strip out, show them his fucking butthole, and then he's gonna get ready to go to yard two. We would usually bring a braided rope out with us to do pull-ups in the corner of the cage, and we would be doing shitloads of burpees out on the yard. We would fucking always be so military and fucking so fucking just straight militant that when it's called the hard and soft count. So when I'm doing my burpees, I'm going one, two, three, and then my celly's got the hard count. One, one, two, three, my celly's got the hard count, two, and we're going up. By the time we get to 23, that's our number. We we always yell out Supreme White Power. I'm not the racist motherfucker. This is how it is in I'm not racist at all. You get down with your people. I'm fucking telling you this is how it is. You're not going against it. Done. We're done with that shit. No more racist shit. This is how prison is. Understand the California prison system. Understand who people are when they're in there. And that's how it is. You're not going to fucking against it. I've seen some of the craziest fucking shit in the shoe. And one of the craziest shits I've ever fucking seen was when we just 
We had just got went out to yard. We come back, and one of the blacks who never goes out to yard, he's been in there four fucking years, boo-boo from Compton. He fucking gassed this bitch, Miss Miller. The CEO, I don't like that word, bitch, my bad. But anyways, he gassed Miss Miller. He had a bunch of shit and piss in a bag, and when she came in up to the trace, I squirted it in her face and shit. That was one of the sickest things I seen because they took him out the cell and they beat the motherfucking shit out this fool. Uh, how interesting, right? Is this not like this? Is like another world entirely, where I don't want to say there's no rules. There's obviously lots of rules, but like the whole like supreme white power thing, right? Like. Again, like you said, he's not racist. I, I, don't, I think most guys don't care, but if, if that's, if that's the, the top, you know, it's like, whatever, you have like all these like terrorist organizations, right? Like, in a country, like, okay, fine, whatever. You think what you want about like Hezbollah or like the Revolutionary Guard in Iran. Like, if, if you want to rise up or, I, again, I, I know that's not prison, but like, you have to kind of play along with like what's going on where you are with the people who are the least tolerant. It's not necessarily the most powerful, it's the least tolerant. Right? There's a very interesting article by Nassim Taleb, uh, who is a, like, whatever, he's got a financial background. And he's got an article about how he says that an intolerant minority can create a massive change in society just because they are intolerant. One of the examples that he gives, and intolerant doesn't necessarily mean violent, like this like, supreme white power thing. Um, intolerant could mean, let's say, like all these like halal food places, right? If you take the entire population of, and he used Great Britain as an example, right? Entire population of Great Britain, the majority of people are not, they don't eat only halal. Like they'll eat whatever they want, really. Like it's halal great, it's kosher great. But you have a, you know, sizable uh, Muslim population who will only eat meat if it's halal. So in response, you have a lot of, organ a lot of businesses that will um, sell halal meat in an attempt to appeal to that minority. Even though it is a minority, it's an intolerant minority and like if everybody will eat um, halal meat but you have a big chunk of the population that won't eat not halal meat then you're going to see a shift in more halal meat it's the same thing with organic um, and then what was the other thing he said like um, throwing piss in some lady's face I, I don't know I, I kind of what's going on here you gas a cop, you better believe you're catching four to five years and you're getting your shit beat in you. Especially if you fuck with one of their female CEOs. Man, that motherfucker had balls. He was pissed. He'd been in the back for a long time. He didn't give a motherfuck, you know? And then my neighbor, I've shared this story before, but I'm gonna share it again because everybody who was here knows this is the craziest story they ever heard in the shoe. And it was motherfucking guilty for me, MF, when he slipped his motherfucking cuffs. He put that shit around his fist like brass knuckles and he lit the fuck up out of these two cops while they were taking him to the shower. He slipped his cuffs, just blah, 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 just starts lighting them up, lacerating the shit out of their faces. And then he grabs their spray when they're knocked out on the ground, just starts soaking their faces. We're hitting the doors. Everyone's hitting the fuck out of the doors. The place is lit the fuck up. Everyone's going crazy. He's lighting the building up with the spray. And he's holding it by the top of the can. And it, the, the tip breaks off because he's not bracing the bottom. There's a heavy ass can. And then he just starts dumping it on the cop's head. He binks that motherfucker off the cop's head. Ding, just fucking boom. Fucking they come in 10 deep. They beat the fuck out this fool. They took him back to the BMU where I was just at. And we didn't see him for, for at least like three, four weeks. When he finally came back, this fool, they treated this fool like Hannibal Lecter, man. They always had to, everywhere he got escorted, he needed a camera on him, he needed two officers and a lieutenant or a sergeant, someone with fucking, uh, someone with stripes had to be on him too. And they had to make sure that fucking he was watched at all times because he could slip his fucking cuss. So, I mean, this motherfucker, I mean, it was two weeks after that when they hit his back because they kept fucking with him. And he told him, he said, keep fucking with me. Little ass kid. He was there for murder. He domed a fucking Asian liquor store owner right on camera, looking at the camera. He was looking at the camera and just went, bah, just fucking kill this motherfucker. So, I mean, you're dealing with some fucking nutcases. But the worst part is, is they got feeling, I've said it before, motherfuckers out there think that people don't have a conscience. The problem is, is everybody has a conscience. Sometimes we're just too far removed from thinking we can come back to life, thinking we can undo this karma. So we get caught up in the negativity and we just wash our life up. Don't fucking do that. You can come back. I'm one of the worst motherfuckers growing up my whole life. The worst. And I came back and I got a second chance. I fucking, I let all that negative karma go and my life's fucking going awesome because I'm coming out here with the true selfless intention of helping motherfuckers avoid all that pain I felt. Now in the fucking shoe. Wow. Uh, like how, how can anybody, how can, how can you watch this and not, you know, whatever. Uh, I, I don't know. Like yeah, straight up, how can you watch this and not be inspired? Really? Like I haven't been to prison, but I'm still like, Teach me more, <laughs> Wes. Like, give me, you know, I'm also, I don't think, in any danger of going to prison anytime ever in my life. Um, but how interesting, right? Like, first of all, those crazy stories. Like, you know, I think that's interesting that he said is that, like, he thinks that, you know, it, it's assumed that nobody has a conscience in prison. But the reality is that people do have a conscience. Like, whatever. You know, I, I, I get, and I, I don't really know. I haven't met too many people who are like, I don't want to say insane, but, but who have done a lot of enough fucked up shit to put them in prison and stay there and continue doing more fucked up shit. Like I really, I don't think I've met any. Um, 
but I, I guess just on your basic like human to human level, you you will feel some sort of remorse if you kill somebody or if you you know injure somebody or disfigure them or something. Um, but I guess that you just think, and, and maybe this is this is also kind of the impression that I get when I will you know read about or, or think about any sort of prisoner, which is that they are in there for such a long time and they're so deep in the game and they're really surrounded only by other people who are also kind of just so far removed and so like if, if you're you know whatever what's the classic like cliched line is you're the average of the five people you spend the most time with well guess what if you're in prison and the five people you spend the most time with are like supreme white power people who are violent and you know crazy or, or acting crazy then you're also going to act crazy or whatever your gang or race is um so yeah to to avoid that in the first place seems to be ideal clearly uh, but what a what a good message, you know? What a what a good. I'm try, I'm, I'm wondering like how, how can you not how can you beat this? But like what's what's the equivalent of this for your average person? Most people haven't been to prison. Most people can't relate. Most people can't get so inspired to to help people change their lives or prevent themselves from fucking up to such a degree that this guy can because he's been there. He's been in the shit. He's been there for years of his life, right? Like he messed up a lot, so he says, paid the price, had the consequences, and now he's out trying to prevent other people from doing that. But what's your average person's equivalent to that? Average person just wants to go and make enough money to buy shit they don't need. And how do you, how do you get so stirred up about um, preventing, like what, what's the equivalent? You know, if, if you're not, how do you find the same level of conviction for um, your average person to do something? You know, you're gonna go help ex-cons or, or juvenile delinquents also like would they even listen to you how could you even get excited about that I, I don't think so it's always a problem we're just trying to tat and the cops know we're tatting so they go in to get our shit i actually had to go to medical one time to get my wisdom teeth pulled while i was in the shoe and while they're walking me out there i got shackles on my ankles and i just started getting my legs blasted now the fucking the, the scabs that i had around my ankles because we're using shitty ass guns and these motherfuckers are just rap, just fucking causing scabs on your ankles and the tats are fucking you up so i got these uh, shackles around my ankles and they're just ripping my tats off as i'm walking to medical it's a far walk from the shoe to medical so i'm walking a long time i'm, I'm shackled up i got my fucking my wrist shit on and my, my ankle shackles and they're rubbing my fucking new ankle tats raw as fuck and we get there and they're like and I noticed that I'm bleeding like a motherfucker already when we're halfway there. And we get there and they're like, dude, like you're bleeding like a motherfucker. Like, like you just got a fresh head. I'm like, yeah, whatever. Who gives a fuck? So they go back and hit my house. Now this is the problem. This CO chick Miller, she had, a, she had it against all of us back there. She just didn't like any convicts. She's one of those ones with a chip on her shoulder. She didn't want to see us do good. She acted like she got stabbed from my tattoo needle when she was searching my house. So now she's trying to say she it's a fucking assault and she got something from it. And my cellie's a fucking jokester. He's doing a gang of time. He's doing 17. And he just got another case. He's on his way to Calipat. But he fucking, uh, he fucking just starts coughing. He's like, oh, oh, oh. my hep C's flaring up. Oh, I'm sorry, Miss Miller. You, I know you got that shit. She was so fucking pissed. But I mean, I'm just trying to tell you, you're dealing with some fucking cats that don't give a shit about what would break your little heart. This shit would break you. The shoe's meant to break you and it doesn't break them. They get used to it. They adjust. There was a time we were fishing, and uh, actually my, my celly and the other white boys were fishing some dope. They had some black in a, in a rig and an envelope, and they were fishing it from cell to cell. Fishing means when you have a shoelace from cell to cell, and you throw uh, like anything, you make anything heavy, and you slide it from under your door all the way across the building under the other cat's door. And if you don't make it, he slides out and gets you, and he pulls you in. Now you attach some contraband, and you pull it back. Now he was pulling back the dope. It was like a 50 paper with some heroin in a rig, and he pulled it too quick, and the, the wind blew the envelope, and it smacked against the wall, and the cop fucking grabbed that shit. Now we got, he got, he comes up to the window and he's like, hey man, uh, and he's fucking gowed out. That means he's on heroin. He's just all, oh, and he's all, hey, give me my mail. I, I need my mail. And then the motherfucking cop looks in it. He's all, oh, you need your mail? Yeah, whatever the fuck. It was a rig and some dope. Now they took us all out of our cells and they threw us in the locked showers in the, in the shoe. The showers got locks on them in cages. So they threw us in the locked showers and then we fucking had to sit in there for three fucking days. And these wet ass, gross ass showers. We sat in there for three days because they were trying to get somebody to snitch. There was a real youngster, James from IE, and they thought he would crack, you know, and we just kept him strong. We're like, hey, fool, you're going to be good. Like, this ain't shit. We're all here together. Don't trip. You know, we got you. Just fucking ride through this and I got you when we get out, you know? Now the shoe is just always grimy shit. I happen to be in the shoe. I'm Wow. I, I don't even know, like, I, I don't know why I'm reacting so, so strongly to this. Because, is it maybe I, whatever, have done too many videos today or something, but uh, uh, how intense is that? It's like, I, I don't know, I have no frame of reference for any of that at all. What, what is the shoe? Is this, is, is that like a special, like, what is the shoe in prison? Uh, special housing unit. Hmm. Yeah, so it looks like... Ah, so it is solitary confinement. Okay, all right. So that's what I thought in the beginning. Um, yeah, apparently, from what I've heard, solitary confinement is like the worst. Like, obviously, right? It's like the punishment of punishments. They put you in solitary. Um, but, you know, got to hand it to these prisoners for, like, thinking of clever ways to, like, do whatever it is they're doing. Like, to, to always, you know, it's the, it's the predator-prey relationship, right? The predator evolves, the prey will evolve, and then the predator evolves, and so on and so forth, until, you know, it's not that, um, 
it's not that the, the one will always be dominant over the other, it's, it's a cycle. Uh, that came to mind, and also when he was talking about this, or he was talking about how, you know, they're, they lock them all in the showers, and they're, you know, disgusting showers, whatever, and they're, they're trying to get somebody to crack and snitch or whatever. It reminds me, there's a concept in, I want to say economics or something, what's called prisoner's dilemma. And basically what happens is they go, you know, the, the, it's like a hypothetical situation where they make a, um, like, it's like a box with like four quadrants, right? And let's say these prisoner criminals get arrested, right? And there's two of them. And the cops or judge, whatever, says to them, says to them individually. They, they question them separately. And they say, like, to each of them, they say, okay, if you both snitch and you both rat on each other, you get 10 years, right, in prison. If neither of you snitch, you get one year in prison or you get to go free or something. If one snitches and the other doesn't snitch, one goes free, one gets 20 years, right? So, like, what do you do? You know, and, and this is basically the point is that if you both snitch, you're both fucked. If neither of you snitches, then it's like the best situation for both of you or, or something like that, right? Like if neither of you snitch, you both get to go free or something like that. Or I don't know, something like that. But basically the point is like if you snitch, if you fuck the other guy over, then you get off with a light of sentence. Light of sentence, you're pretty much guaranteed that, right? And you, you know, not only that, but you know in the back of your mind that the other guy is getting the same ultimatum as well. So it's like... Are you going to trust and believe that when the shit goes down, this other person is going to be honorable and not fuck you over? Or are you more concerned with your own survival and you're just going to snitch and fucking deal with it, you know, whatever, and just get out? But if you both snitch, then you both get 20 years, right? These are made up numbers. It's just how I heard it. Uh, but it's interesting hearing how they actually do that, I guess. And of course, it makes sense that they would do that. Because, um, but um, honestly, like, it makes me wonder how anybody comes out of that alive like like alive straight up not not just alive and what what seems to be thriving I, i've only seen a few of his videos but what seems to be alive and thriving but alive period like at all H how do you get out of that when and again maybe i i, I don't know are these cherry picked examples maybe but even for this to happen like these like small examples to happen occasionally like dude what, what's your equivalent in the real world of having to deal with this really you know, you, you go to like, like I remember yesterday, I, oh, I, my, I lost my microphone from my headset. I had to go buy a new headset. And this whole thing, I'm in Vietnam right now and like it was complicated. I couldn't find the right headset and what I found was expensive and still not good enough. And it took me, I didn't make any videos, it took me all day. I came back at like four o'clock finally with this headset or two o'clock, messed with the audio levels for like two hours as you could hear like picking up the street knives more than usual. And I was so frustrated and angry at the end of the day. And then I thought to myself, I was thinking of this periodically throughout the day. I was like, wow, this is my only problem. This is my biggest problem right now in life is that my headset isn't good enough. You know, I'm thank God from America, you know, like whatever, am I racist to say this? But like, I, I think it's a benefit to be white, right? In, in the world, um, you know, there's advantages and disadvantages to every ethnicity, I think, but but it's not, I don't, I don't think, unless you're in like whatever, South Africa, like, it's not really bad to be white. Um, you know, I speak English fluently, like I'm from California, like I'm healthy, like I've got good values, thank God, from the right parents, like I have all this stuff going for me and people have it so much worse than I do at any given time, most of the world arguably, and here I am getting bent out of shape because my, I didn't get the right headset from the store, you know what I mean, it just kind of makes you think. The last fucking big ass hunger strike, and if the shoe ain't already bad enough, be there on a fucking hunger strike, man. We were always asking, like I said in the last video, how do fools in prison stay in shape? We work out all the time, we don't need shit. So if you want to get somewhere in life, just start taking shit away. I always, I always preach to take shit the fuck away. If you want to get to know yourself, take shit away. If you want to get somewhere physically, take shit away. It's nothing you're going to fucking add to your life that's going to make you stronger. So I mean, you know, I was back there on the last hunger strike in the shoe and we couldn't eat. But luckily I was stacked up at the time. The cops weren't even tripping. Usually in the shoe, they put all your shit in brown paper bags. And at this time, the cops weren't tripping. We were fucking, everything was good. They were, they were allowing us some fucking, some more canteen that we usually should have in ourselves. So we were eating. They weren't too fucking crazy about the hunger strike. They filmed us all and they gave us all charges for fucking, uh, for, for being part of a hunger strike. So we all got 115s for being part of that hunger strike now like the hunger strike in the pen if a motherfucker acts like he's there's fools who try to go against that shit you know they'll be like oh no dude fuck that like they're already getting gay about it like what happens if i eat i said motherfucker you better not man you better not we're telling you you're not you're not eating i'll shoot you a soup and some beans every day and that's all you get you'll be fine but i mean these are the fucking times that really make you enjoy life if you want to really get to knowing your life knowing yourself and enjoying life like i said take shit away like i said watch how good that fucking plain ass bologna sandwich tastes after you've been on a hunger strike for 10 days i mean this is going to do something to you mentally that you'll keep for you the rest of your life them pancakes are going to be pretty fucking good when you get them but main fucking aspect of it is the shoe is the most militant place it's the most savage you're going to be living 
All right, before before he gets into that, I really hope I haven't fucked up the audio on this. It's like new headset. I'm like starting and stopping the the, the mute on this every time the clip goes just because it's too sensitive. Uh, I think very interesting. I'm, I'm not sure if he came up with this on his own because this is sometimes repeated in like self improvement or self development stuff. That it's not it's not what you add to your life that will enrich it. It's what you take away. Okay, so. You know, to, to a lesser extent, I, I realized this when I started doing the warrior diet, which is basically OMAD, where, uh, and this was spelled out in the book, where basically the author says, when you don't eat all day, and you finally do eat your one meal at night, you're so hungry that you will eat anything, right? And if you will eat anything, you might as well make the healthier choice, because you'll eat anything and anything will taste good. And it just so happens that in this book, the author recommended that you start with um, like raw green leafy vegetables which I always interpreted to be a salad. Salad, obviously, like, okay, fine, everybody likes salads, has the right dressing and the right, you know, fixins or whatever. But generally, a salad is not gonna be your first choice for most people. However, when I didn't eat all day, I didn't eat anything for the entire day, and then it came to eat that salad, salad was like the best thing I'd ever had in my life. Oh my God, like, I, I ate it, like, so happily. Um, other times where I, and it, this was an example about food, which is, I think the area where most people uh, are willing to take something away, let's say, or at least in the world that I'm involved in, like the um, whatever, you know, fitness world or whatever, uh, if you do a 48-hour fast or 72 or something, and you're and you're somewhat active during that time, when it finally does become to eat, uh, become time to eat, and and you sit down, right, you go through all the steps necessary to like prepare your food and get your food. It's not just a simple thing like let me pop over to the store, bag of, buy a, buy a bag of chips and eat it. You know, you put a lot more care, a lot more thought into it when you haven't done it for two or three days, because the importance all of a sudden is much, much higher for you. You know, I'm, I'm not a religious person at all, but like, I, I feel like, I feel the desire to say a prayer when I eat. You know, I don't believe in any of that shit, right? Like, I, I hope it would be a nice bonus if there's an afterlife and all that shit, but like, is there really some guy up there pulling the strings? I, I don't think so, probably not. Uh, but still, you, you feel the desire to just thank Maybe not God, but maybe just the world or humanity or being alive and being able to experience the, the visceral pleasure of eating something. Um, and then I think to, to a, a larger extent, if you, if you cut out other things in your life, maybe you cut out social media, you do a dopamine fast, or you cut out soda, or you cut out cigarettes, or you cut out, like me, for example, right now, I've been in a train for two weeks, I've been going to an internet cafe play, playing Dota every night for three hours. You know, maybe if I cut that out, it would also enrich my life. Food for thought structure 24 7 we're gonna make sure you're up at 3 30 you're gonna work out every day even when that door don't open on the weekends because you only get yard monday through friday even if they don't run yard which sometimes they'll fuck with you in the shoe they ain't running yard sometimes you don't even want to fucking go out because it's a buck 10 in them cages a buck 20 and you're like fuck that shit i hope they don't run it but anyways if they don't run it, you're still working out and if they do run it you're going out with your boys we're running in that them 10 sets of 88 burpees i'm gonna do 88 you're gonna do 88 i'm gonna do 88 you're gonna do 88 we're gonna do that till we hit 888 burpees 88 meaning hh hail hitler this is the fucking shit it's not my fucking choice i'll tell you again i'm not racist it's the epitome of ignorance but in the pen you're not gonna change these fucking things i hate when people drop it in the comments they're so badass they don't believe in this i don't even know how it could be like that why don't you change it Wes? why doesn't it change shut the fuck up dude it's not gonna change okay Live with this shit, don't go to the pen. If you ain't tough enough, turn your life around. Cause guess what? You ain't tough enough, I wasn't tough enough. I had to force myself to be tough enough. And all that was, was 10 years of tears. 10 years of pain, 10 years of missing everyone that I didn't see one fucking time. Straighten your motherfucking life out. Wow. 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 Wow, just wow. Like, is the audio working on this? Thank God. Um, dare I say it, he might, oh my God. Fucking gigantic mosquito. Uh, he might be the realest, the, the realest motherfucker on YouTube, arguably. Who's, who's more real than him, right? Like, you know, I, I like Snake Diet Guy, of course. He's also very real. Uh, but, it, you know, and okay, fine. You're comparing, like, or I'm comparing the, the two people that come to mind immediately. Snake Diet Guy, as hard as he is, didn't do 10 years in prison. You know what I mean? Like, okay, fine. Also a hard-ass dude. But this is, like... This is a, a special animal right here, um, but uh, you know, I, I th and honestly, like, okay, fine, I'm Jewish, like, whatever. The whole like Heil Hitler, like, supreme white power. If I was in there, I'd fucking be doing the Heil Hitler salute. Also, I'd be doing, I'd do whatever they wanted. Fuck, I'm trying to survive. I'm trying to live. If you want me to fucking grow the Hitler mustache, I'll grow the Hitler mustache. Fine. You want to piss on like the Israeli flag? Okay, sure. Nope. You want to curse like Moses, Abraham, all that? I'll do whatever you want. Just don't kill me. You know, okay, fine. Like, oh, you're you're weakling, you're dishonorable. Like, I'm again, fine. 
certain things you have to have morals, you have to have ethics, you have to have standards, right? Thing like no snitching, fine, that's that's different, okay? But but in terms of falling in line in in what is clearly a militant, extremely high discipline um, environment, you know, you, you have to fall in line with those things. You have to follow the rules, and if you're white, the rules are you're fucking doing 88 burpees and the other guys doing 88 burpees 888 burpees holy shit i thought i was hardcore for doing 100 burpees and um you know 50 pull-ups and like running 5k 88 burpees to so do 880 burpees that is unreal 880 burpees like I, I, how long are you in the yard like do you have all day to do this really don't you only get to go out for like an hour how do you do 880 burpees in an hour or or however long you're out there like 10 years man 10 years of your life in there and then you get out and you're like you know it reminds me of like when I got out of the army right like uh, again to be fair not really comparable somewhat maybe but like 10 years is not you know two years right uh, but when you get out you're just like wow I'm free what will I do what should I do now I can do anything I want you know and again I don't I don't know how long exactly he's been out but fucking starting a YouTube channel like thank you like Thank you for being like a real person on YouTube. I made a few other videos about Wes. I, I didn't know who he was when I when I did the first couple of videos. Like, didn't really know what to expect. Wasn't able to really appreciate um, what these videos are. N now I do. Uh, I, I really like I really like his videos. I really like this attitude. I I would also like to see um, a more a way to apply this to, to mainstream lifestyle not necessarily let's say juvenile delinquents people are fucking up in the legal system that's important work as well it seems to be his passion but like let's i'm not saying put him in a suit and have him do fucking seminars but like how how can somebody like me use this who doesn't really commit any is in no danger of going to prison you know what i mean and maybe the advice is the same i think the advice might be the same like do i need to like say heil hitler and do 88 like 800 burpees a day like you know I'll tr i guess i'll try it like maybe that'll work just be more disciplined right like t tell me tell me more Wes. i'm gonna leave a comment um eight thousand comments is how many gonna read this probably not um amazing video man i'm i'm impressed <laughs> i don't know how else to really say it that said, I was wondering if at some point you could give some advice for how mainstream stream people, people, aka not, um, aka not uh, necessarily people in danger of going to prison any anytime soon could apply some of your uh some of the stuff you teach uh for example the 88 burpees thing i think it's a little unconventional and probably not the uh in, it's probably not the main fuck am i muted i really hope i'm not muted oh my god okay probably not and the burpees, um, and uh, it's probably more the discipline than the burpees themselves, but it's, as they say, it's not stupid if it works. God, I want to make content like this. How do I make content like Wes Watson? Give me some advice. That's what I want to know in, in my daily request for a comment. It's like, how can I be more West Watson-ish, please? Like, just what what do I do? Like, I, I need to speak about something with passion. Maybe I'll reverse engineer his uh, his stuff and, and see if I can not copy him. Anyway, West Watson, man, what a monster! Holy shit! Uh, leave me a comment, peace.